going to talk about repentance in the kingdom. Repentance. Now, when you think of the word repentance, you say, well, what does it mean? It means, for some people, they say, well, all I got to do is say I'm sorry. And that's repenting. All I have to do is just say, hey, uh, I confess, I'm a sinner. That's repenting. But as we will find out today, repentance is a lot deeper than just uh, saying, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have kids in the house. Uh, uh, they get caught doing this or doing that. Oh, yeah, uh, very quickly I say, I'm sorry. Uh, we know from experience that, you know, it's just a habitual Habitual thing, huh? Just to say, I'm sorry. Are they really sorry? Uh, you find out that, nah, not really. They don't really understand what it means to be sorry. So we all learn to say, I'm sorry, very quickly. And even as adults, we do the same with God. We say, oh, I'm sorry. And we think, oh yeah, we've actually really repented. But as we dig deeper into the scriptures, we realize that Repentance is not um, as flimsy as we all take it as, uh, uh, it, to me, most of the repentance is, is a superficial, I'm sorry. You know, it, it's a quick, I'm sorry. It's so quick to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but as it really touched your spirit, your heart, your soul, is there any kind of... Um, Is, do you carry a burden in your soul? Is there a burden that you carry in your soul? I know that there have been times that, yes, I've said I'm sorry, but, and then you go, you, but you're really not sorry. And there are some other times that I've said I'm sorry, and I'm really, really sorry. There's a difference between I'm sorry and I'm really sorry, where there is, I feel it. I feel the weight in my soul. Mm -hmm. I, I feel it. And so today we want to go deeper into this word repentance. What does it really mean? What does the Bible tell us about it? We want to go deeper. The reason why we want to go deeper is that we don't want to be in an area where we assume we have been forgiven. But we actually have not been forgiven because we haven't even repented. <laughs> so we don't want to assume that I'm forgiven when I'm really not. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of deception. Uh, the enemy is very crafty. And we all get deceived in many areas. Some think that they're saved, but they're not really saved. <laughs> Some think that they're forgiven, but they're not really forgiven because they haven't repented. There's so many areas of our Christian walk where we can easily be deceived. But we don't want to be deceived. We want to really know. We want to really know what does it mean to actually repent and receive the true forgiveness instead of walking around every day thinking I'm okay, but I'm not. Is it really well with my soul? I need to examine it. And so today, that's what we're going to do. Mm. My beloved, it's yours. Mm. Is it really well mm. with my soul? Repentance. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> do you think repentance is easy? No. Easy? realize is that repentance is extremely difficult. It's extremely hard to uh, feel repentant of what you've done because it's not about what we did ourselves. It's about what we did to the one that we love and claim to love. And so I can hurt myself all day long, but if I hurt you, that brings my soul uh, to tears. You know, like seeing loved ones hurt when 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 Pam was going through her stuff. I know that that's how you felt. Why 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 her? Why not me? Because it hurts more to hurt someone that you love than to hurt yourself. And um, today we're just gonna talk a, a lot about people that have 
said that they sinned against God, but they were not repentant. And, and some ones that did. And sadly, if you dig through the scriptures, there's not a lot of people that actually truly repented. Like, actually truly repented. And so, can you repent halfway? No. So when I say actually truly repent, I mean actual, actually repented. I think that today, like you said, it's so easy to say that repentance is admitting that I'm a sinner, you know, and I'm repenting of all my sins. No, that's not really. I mean, you, you're stating a fact, but repentance is more than a fact. It's a feeling, right? And it feels awful to repent. It takes away, uh, 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 while you're repenting and like moving along in that path, you have no joy. You have no happiness. You have no reason to live. You know, you have doom and gloom over your head. It's not just like, oh, I'm sorry, you know. And uh, I feel that uh, knowing through my own walk with Christ that it's much easier to live in a pretend world, <laughs> you know. And I feel that we do that in our Christianity, in Christianity today, because, you know, we, we're so good at hiding our sin from God, from ourselves, from others. And we're so very bad at being honest with ourselves and with God and with others, you know? And that doesn't mean you have to open your, you know, little red book of sins to everyone. But, but just because you're not telling everyone doesn't mean that you shouldn't bring that up to God with yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting to me that, you know, you look at people like Saul and David in the, in the Old Testament, uh, and, even, and even Saul in the New Testament who became Paul, they uh, didn't repent until someone pointed out their sin, you know? And so I'm like, who are the prophets of today? I mean, oh no, we're just preach good words, we're just preach healing and, you know, <laughs> salvation and all. But I haven't heard someone say, you know, a man that did this, this, that, and that, well, he should die, you know, that that means you. <laughs> I mean, I have never heard anyone preach that or say that to anyone because that would be, you know, who do they think they are? And I understand why we have Jesus Christ but they had the Holy Spirit even then, I mean, in a different way, because David cried out to God and said, take not your Holy Spirit from me. And so, uh, and God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so uh, I just feel that we have blocked prophets from hearing because you say, don't judge me, you know? That, you know, that let him who has no sin cast the first stone kind of way. But there's a difference between casting a stone and bringing the truth to light in someone so that they may be redeemed. Had Nathan not come to David, I mean, what would have happened to him after he 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 uh, he, he committed that sin with Bathsheba? He didn't know himself. He would have stayed in sin and he would have been horribly judged. Yes. Because he wouldn't have had a time, he wouldn't have known to repent. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so we have, uh, like you said, the children in the house, and it's, it's much easier there's so many things that are easier than to repent. Number one is to excuse it. <laughs> That's an easy one, right? Oh, I only did it because of this, and we're gonna go into some biblical examples later, but oh, I'll excuse it, because I was put in this circumstance. It's like the, the, the hungry boy stealing bread because he needs to feed his family, right? It's I'm justified in it because they have what I don't have and I need it. It's an excuse, it doesn't matter. And then there's also, uh, uh, fake repentance because we fear the consequences of our sin, mm -hmm. you know, so We only repent. Oh, forgive me fast. Forgive me fast. Forgive me fast because we don't want the consequence Repentance doesn't take away the consequence. Ask David <laughs> You know and then there's the we say other people made me do it, you know oh, They influenced me. I couldn't say no, but everybody is responsible for themselves and we need to take that to the Lord in honesty, and uh, repentance is not something that I always thought it was. It's like saying sorry for everything you've done against God and, you know, mm -hmm. listing your sins. But, you know, I understand a little bit clearer now what Paul says when he says, I crucify, I die daily, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Repentance is not an event, it's a lifestyle to live repentantly because we're always falling short of the glory of God. Every single second. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, 
with that in mind, there's so many good examples to go to, but um, I also just want to touch on the point uh, and the value of questioning yourself and also questioning others and questioning questions because uh, we assume salvation. In the Christian church today, once you've been baptized and accepted the Lord Jesus, I'm not saying that's not right, but I am saying assuming salvation, uh, it, that, uh, to me, that's a scary thing mm. to do. To say, uh, I've been baptized, I'm saved forever, and all my sins have been forgiven. Because I look at Ananias and Sapphira, and I'm like, they were saved? And they dropped on dead? Yeah, they may have gone to heaven, but uh, we should also fear God more than we love Him and accept Him like that. And we don't... We don't know God. That's the thing. And so we have to think about questions because we assume that we know that we are justified and made righteous by Him and that we're headed to heaven. And I'm not arguing that, but I don't want to go to heaven quicker than He wants me to, you know? And so forget forget the salvation part. God, God handles that, you know? And I don't... There's no scripture that is wrong. But that's not what I'm arguing. But I'm arguing I don't want to go to heaven before my time. Mm. Well, I don't want to go to hell either. And so I don't know. So every day mm. we ought to really examine ourselves and ask questions. Even as you said about Ananias and Sapphira, if you ask me where are they, my answer is I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I'm not going to assume because I don't know. It doesn't matter. God is God, God and he has every reason to be God. I don't know. Just like you can't, uh, you don't know where Judas ended up. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, and, and we assume, but and we, assume we, don't, we don't know. I also know that God is not a fool, <laughs> and I also know that there's some things that He doesn't accept, and I, I and I don't know what heaven looks like. I don't know what kind of realms there are there. So, anyways, with that in mind, I don't want to assume that oh, you know, I was baptized on this day, I'm going to heaven, la la. I don't want uh, to live in heaven in a one-star hotel when my destiny was to live in a five-star suite, you know? And even if you look at it from that perspective, it's like, it's not just heaven and hell. There's levels in heaven. Oh, yeah, there's, there's levels in hell. And so I don't want to assume here and then miss out over there. That's right. I don't well, want to do There's a reason that. why it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes, the fear of the Lord. But we just want the love, love, love and forgiveness, right? <laughs> Ah. Uh, That's kind of like what uh, children want. Yes. <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll give you a hug. And it's like, I was talking to Rasmus the other day. He had, uh, you know, he was mouthy towards his brother. And he'd gotten in trouble at school. And so I said, uh, I had to sign this paper for what he had done in school. And I said, why uh, did you go all weekend without telling me this? Well, you know, Monday morning, sign this paper, Mom. I'm hoping I wouldn't read it, right? Uh, <laughs> And then he goes, I'm sorry, Mom. I'm like, really? Are you sorry? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm like, did you feel guilty? No. Oh, <laughs> so you can be sorry without having guilt? <laughs> no, you can't. You know, guilt is not always a bad thing. That's what I'm saying. The questioning and examining yourself is very, very important because uh, it's interesting even how the world began. There were, God didn't have any questions in paradise, he didn't have any questions in heaven because he was the answer. Mm -hmm. The one that brought the question in paradise was Satan. Yeah. And that made Eve doubt. And so not all questions are good. Not all of repentance leads to salvation. It is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You have questions that lead you to Christ and you also have questions that are asked in a way to lead you against Christ. And uh, so when we examine ourselves, and, 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 you know, just like when I'm guilty of something and I have guilt, uh, there is the guilt of God, that yeah, I feel it's God, but then the enemy also is very quick to say, you're just, blah, 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 and brings all these other guilty feelings that I'm not meant to have. And so I'm saying, this is a jungle in my mind and in my heart mm -hmm. to, to try to determine what mm -hmm. is from him and what is from Satan and, and what questions I should really answer and what I should address and what I should not answer and what I shouldn't address. There's a new trend today called open theism. And open theism is what they're teaching these kids in philosophy classes in college. 
open theism is simply saying that God does not know everything. <laughs> he somewhat just goes along with events as they come. No, so and so he kind of makes a decision as events unfold. A very dangerous doctrine. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of something that you're talking about in regards to, yeah, I mean, now some you know, people ask questions, and one of the questions that uh, the professor uh, posed was, if God knew everything, and he knew that someone was going to hell, why would a good God allow that? Because hmm. mm -hmm. he knows everything. Exactly. Uh, yeah, but he but knows everything, so he's so wicked, he knows it, and yet he's still allowing somebody to go. Yes. I so see. their point is, maybe he doesn't know everything. That's what I'm saying, that this, the question just comes full circle. Exactly. Because he knows everything. Yeah. That's the reason he's he letting them go. He knows everything. Because he yeah. knows their heart. Oh, yeah. But so this is the kind oh, of yeah. stuff that you're talking about that tries to uh, put doubt. And you know what? If everybody went to heaven, then how is earth any different than heaven? That's my question. This is another earth. We're okay. full of people that have different hearts. Yeah. And so I know that God is God and God is good. And because God is good, there also has to exist evil. Oh, yeah. And some people join the enemy in evil. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, anyway, I just want to say that to confirm that, yeah, some questions are not necessarily good. It leads, no. it can lead somebody out of faith instead of into more faith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, that's what Satan did to Eve. Ha! Huh. You know, I mean, look at what the serpent says. Uh, uh, let's see. He said this, and, the, uh, and this is in chapter 3 of Genesis. Now, the serpent was more cunning than anyone, and he said, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. He, he, in those situations, he gets us to challenge God's sovereignty. Yes. Yes. And yeah. that's exactly what he did. And, yeah. and to doubt ourselves, yeah. you know? And that's to, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and that's it. And he has no mercy. Yeah. And, you know, that's when the fall of man was in God. Uh, after they had eaten of the apple, that's the first time that God Himself asked the first question yeah. in the whole Bible. Remember what it is? Where are you? Yeah, where are you? Where are and we think we're saved here on earth. This is sad of me. And they only took one bite. I've taken many bites. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking that God knows where I am? Or I think I know where I am? Mm -hmm. And I assume that I'm not hiding from him like Adam and Eve were but look at the grace and the long suffering of God before we head into the main scripture because I, I, I love this I had never noticed this before he said <clears throat> so he said to, to, to Adam where are you that's the first question and so Adam said I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself right that's our, um, uh, sometimes, most of the time, the first reaction to when we know we had sinned, right? Mm -hmm. We hide ourselves from it. We go back into our shell like a little turtle, pretend it didn't happen, or we put it in a drawer, or, or, or we throw it away, or, or we just don't want to think about it anymore. That's hiding it. That's not repentance. That's what Adam did first. <laughs> and then God, having mercy, question number two. Who told you that you were naked? He's not condemning him yet. <laughs> because there's, th there's questions before condemnation. Ah, have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And then the man said, the woman who you gave it to me, she gave it to me and I ate. Oh yeah, that's the second one. You made me do it. <laughs> that's my favorite one. I'm not responsible. He made me do it. Or, or she made me do it. Yeah. Because, because they have control over me, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, and then the Lord God said to the woman, this is the third question, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, so I ate. Nowhere in there do I see any repentance at all. At all. How do we know that if Adam and Eve wouldn't have had repented? fallen at their faces in repentance, maybe the condemnation and the judgment on mankind wouldn't have been as severe. That's true. Because he is a merciful God, but we need to see not just at the fall of man, but at the 
further fall of man, you know? They, they further fell. God didn't condemn them right away. And that gives me hope. It wasn't just one question. And it wasn't a question. The last question was, what have you done? <laughs> that was the last question. I was like, it wasn't the first question. Sophia, what'd you do? How do you know this? How do you know that? You know, where are you? Why have you gone away from me? Because when we fall into sin and when we're when we need repentance, it's really we're not with God. You know, we're not in, in communion with God. We're hiding from Him and from ourselves and from others. And so I, I, I before the judgment and the condemnation and the kicking out of the garden, he asked them questions. And God had never asked a question before these three questions. And so, with all those questions, we're going to turn to the book of questions and talk about a man who uh, had a lot of questions and was asked a lot of questions, and who also uh, fell into deep, deep repentance. And this is, my friends, the book of Job. Now, I'm tempted to preach on the whole thing and read it over because I have highlights everywhere, <laughs> but... <laughs> God will say what he needs to say, because uh, let's look at the beginning. Let's start from the beginning of Job, and then we'll skip over to the repentance part later. Because it's interesting to me uh, what happened uh, in the beginning. Why was Job chosen for such an assignment as that? Was he just too good to be true and needed to be tested? You know, are always all the very faithful ones the ones that have to suffer through this? Is that the destiny? Well, it's better to not be faithful in. And it's better to be blameful if this is the kind of life that you're going to have here where you're taken from glory into suffering. With sores all over, wishing you were dead, right? Let's think about this. Is the, the, nobody really wants to have the life of Job. Mm -hmm. And this was a man that God said, there, there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. Mm -hmm. <sighs> to me, I'm like, why him then? <laughs> well, if we look, um, let's see. Remember who he was. He prayed every day and offered sacrifices for his family. He was a true man of God. Uh, my sons have sins and cursed, and, uh, and God is their heart. And so he did it diligently. He was faithful. He, you know, he more than went to church every Sunday. Like he prayed every day in the prayer closet. Yeah. This is a man that is someone that God loves. <laughs> to me, that, that's scary. Um, and in verse 6, this is how the development of why. God allowed Satan to have his way on Job's life. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And let's stop there. What does that mean? There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. What is something that we do today? How would that look like today if, you, if you're going as a son and a daughter of God to present yourselves before the Lord? Going to the prayer altar. Maybe. Going to the church and kneeling down. Maybe going to confession, like in the Catholic Church, maybe that you go in to present yourself to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Maybe going to the altar for prayer. Uh, going to uh, someone that is a representation of God in order to ask for prayer. That, that's what I think of when I see that, because only the sons of God are the ones that are going to want to present themselves before the Lord, and to, to hear from the Lord, right? It's not, it's not a bad thing. We all should present ourselves in front of the Lord. But then the, this is scary. And Satan also came among them. Wow. Let's think about this as one person, for example. I am a son or daughter of God. You're a son of God. We come to present ourselves in front of the Lord, and Satan is also among me. Yes. <laughs> That's why we need repentance, isn't it? You know? That's sin. <laughs> That's so scary to me. That, 
you know, especially that the sons of God would, would be walking next to Satan to present themselves in front of God. And that's where I say, let's not be blind to who we are, which is more than sinners. We're more than sinners. People want to say, I'm just a sinner. I'm a forgiven sinner. I know, I'm, we're, we're worse than sinners. But we are. <laughs> because we don't always realize that we're unforgiven sinners. Listen to his words in Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, yourself, a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. holy, acceptable to God you present yourself as a living sacrifice you're just skipping ahead mm -hmm. I'm sorry no it's good, I love it yeah. but uh, uh, so, so let's, let's remember that Satan came among them and the Lord said to Satan again with the question from where do you come? it's a God question so Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. Huh, so I, I ask myself here, Lord, why would you uh, kind of turn Satan's attention towards this faithful man when, when these other sons of God are coming to present themselves with the devil? Remember, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, to accuse, <laughs> to accuse them. And so God, in his marvelous and mysterious way, I, I think of this as like, hey, they may not be able to, to, to I may not be able to justify their accusations because they think they're forgiven, <laughs> because they're coming to God with Satan in their hearts or sin in their hearts to, to, to present themselves, not to confess, not to repent, to present. To present is different than to repent. And God just says, well, instead of focusing so much on these sons of God, sons of mine who I cannot yet justify because they have not yet repented look at this guy over here right pay attention to him and so satan answered the lord and said does job fear god for nothing there we go more questions like a battle of the questions uh have you not met, made a hedge around him and his household and all around that he has on every side and then he went on to mur to murder all the sons and the daughters of Job. And uh, he didn't even ask God a single question after that happened. Job didn't go and, uh, and ask him question, why Lord, why did you take them all away in one day? He just, he, he's, his faithfulness and love for the Lord was so strong that he said the Lord gave and the Lord is taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm sorry, I, those were words, I, I, I don't know if I could ever say that after all my children died in one day. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the name of the Lord. I would be like, what? <sighs> Remember, he was an upright and faithful man who prayed for these children every day and offered sacrifices for them. Mm -hmm. That's like a slap in the face saying, didn't you not hear me pray every morning and every night? Didn't you hear me cry out? For their forgiveness, yet you, you took them away in one day? But he doesn't do that. So then Satan attacks Job's health. And in chapter 2, it says the same thing. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Probably not the same sons. Every day, sons of God go and try to present themselves in front of God. And Satan came among them to present himself before the Lord. Ah, you know why he does that? He's trying to break into heaven. <laughs> He's trying to put himself in a soul that God thinks is heaven bound. Right? So that he can go into heaven and corrupt that place too. <laughs> and God said, from where do you come? The same sort of thing. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered Job, my servant? Wow, oh, hasn't he been through enough, God? And that's what I say. Isn't there another faithful man that you can pick on now? Because Job just lost everything. <laughs> but no, the test was not yet over. And we all know what Satan did. And uh, he covered his whole body in sores. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had to scrape himself in the midst of ashes to even like be able to bear the pain. 
And uh, that's when we hear a question from his wife. Again, a question that is not used for good, it's used for evil. Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Isn't that what the devil says all day long when we go through suffering and when we're hurting and when we're in pain, when we're in sickness, when we go through cancer or whatever illness it is? But do you still hold fast to your integrity? Do you still pray to that God that hasn't healed you? You have prayed all your life and look, look what's happened to you. Nothing good can come out of prayers then, right? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity? A question, an evil question answered with a godly question. And I love that because that, Jesus did that a lot in the New Testament. He, he answered wickedness with questions because it's not worth an answer. <laughs> I don't have to say, yes, I still hold fast to my integrity. I don't, know. I don't I have, have to, to justify or defend myself yeah. in front of Satan. I want God to defend me when he accuses me. That's what I want him to do. And so this whole 42 chapters now really begins as uh, the three friends come in the later part of chapter 2. And uh, if, if you dig into it in your own time and look at all the questions that are that are posed, you'll begin to see the difference of how questions are asked. And we're not going to go through all the 42 chapters, but I'm going to summarize what I've seen through my study is that Job's friends weren't looking for answers from him. They were looking for him to do something. Not for him to speak answers, right? But they approached it with like, would God do this? Would God do that? You know, but they already had the answer. Basically, the, the, the general theme of Job's friends, when they speak, they start out with questions, and then they preach for a really long time. <laughs> you know, it's like, did you really have questions then? Or did you just ask those questions to, like, make your answer look better? That's what we call them windbags. Exactly. And so those are, uh, when we ask questions, of God, then, or when God asks us questions, we're quick to preach, and, and and we're slow to really digest the meaning of it, and we're slow to see that even though these three friends knew their scriptures very well, <laughs> they knew who God was. They were sons of God that had the devil by their side. <laughs> Don't makes you me, see? It? Makes me think of Elijah. When he asked Elijah twice, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Elijah goes through the whole story again. It's like, no, Elijah, I'm not asking you because I, I don't know why you're here. Uh-huh, uh, exactly. I need you to think about this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like Jesus asked Peter three times. The thing of three questions is very significant. Yeah. Do you love me? Because you know what Peter didn't do? He didn't excuse it. He didn't blame someone else. And he didn't try to hide from it. That, that's the grace of God. So yeah, uh, uh, my friends, repentance so often is, is looked at, oh, you, you acknowledge your sin and, and you grow from it and you don't commit that sin again. And I don't, that can happen if God touches you and throws your desires elsewhere. But I'm also not going to say that repentance is the thing that changes me. God is the one that changes me. I cannot change me by myself, but I can repent, right? And so... When we say things like, oh, the, you know, if you keep on doing it, it's not true repentance, uh, it can be. We don't know those things. You could be truly sorry many times, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it just one time and done, and then you never do it? I, I think that's uh, a bit of a minimalistic way to look at God's real forgiveness and, and, for, and, and joy that he brings those that come with true repentance. Remember that David sinned with the senses and also with the adultery. Now, they're different sins, but my goodness, if I have to come and repent and repent and repent and repent, repent for all the sins, right, that are listed in the Bible, that would take up my whole day. But yet, we're so quick to do that in our prayers to say, okay, today I did this, today I did that. Whereas true repentance is, is, is not a prayer. It's a life. It's dying daily, crucifying yourself to the cross and feeling that I am not worthy of you. Lord, once we feel worthy, once we feel, I'm saved, 
I did good today. Ah, be careful. That's it. That's oh. what's amongst them. Yes. That was exactly. the lesson. That's, that's what I always, <clears throat> not always, but that's one of the things I've seen with that Peter question was that it was Peter, Jesus allowing Peter to see his no Lord. I don't love you the way you you're expecting me to love you. But I need you. And he's like, yeah, Peter, you need me. You need me to fill you, to so you can love me <coughs> yeah. the way you're supposed to love me. Exactly. Because he was literally at the end of himself. Mm -hmm. He was repentant. He was, there was nothing more he could do. He realized his emptiness and brokenness. Yes. And unless the Lord filled him and changed him, mm -mm. he was gone. That's beautiful. He was hopeless. Well, that's it, it's so true because mm -hmm. even Jesus Christ like himself... Oh, no had to die to prove his love to us. Yeah. Well, he's God, right? Why does he have to die? Well, I'm saying, why do I have to die every day? <laughs> what does that even mean to die every day? Mm. What does that look like? Does it, it just, uh, it's... I think just as love without action is dead, I also feel that repentance without action is also dead. Bring forth the fruit. Well, it's just words. It's just lip it's service. It's just words. And lip it's service. just lip service. That's why John rebuked it so strongly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, you're getting it. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. This thing called repentance is horrible to go through. And you feel that there is nothing that can forgive you. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, mm. it does, God may forget, but we don't. <laughs> and so even though you've been forgiven, uh, the message last week, it, 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 it just made me realize that even though he forgives and forgets, and I forget myself, I forgive myself uh, the, 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 the pain that I have caused the Lord, Jesus Christ, through everything in my life. Uh, I There's not a day that that will not bring me to tears. I'm healed, I'm forgiven, but to know that uh, he loves someone that is so wicked towards him sometimes and it hurts him, uh, that can only be from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only from God. And, and, and anyone kind of walking justified saying, okay, I know we have a list of sins in the Bible, and, 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 but you don't know your own heart. Mm -hmm. And we can justify ourselves by saying, I didn't do that, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. But God doesn't compare you to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't look at the sons of God and say, well, they don't have the faith of Job. He said, Consider this one. Mm -hmm. Consider that one. Uh, he, mm -hmm. he, he, he compares you to who you are in his mind. You know? Yeah. He, has, he knows the real Sophia, right? And he wants me to get to the real Sophia. Mm -hmm. uh, just like he wanted Job to get to the real Job. That's the whole point of life is to move through these tests mm -hmm. in order to become who we are already been made to be. Yep. And he doesn't look, you know, you, you when you die, uh, it's not like a, an open court with a jury. <laughs> you know, they say, oh, no, 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 she was better than that one, she was better than that it's not, it's not, you're not casting lot with anyone. Yeah. There's not, you know, you know, one person wins the entrance of the day kind of contest. It's you and God hmm. and Satan accusing you. That's it. That's it. So how we're so busy comparing ourselves here and think, saying I'm not as bad as, but but you you are worse than you're meant to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the different question. And so you when are we look worse at than you're meant to be. The, mm -hmm. And that's what always makes me cry. Yeah. Because I, I wasn't meant to do a lot of things I did, but just like David wasn't meant to do a lot of things he did, but you you wouldn't there wouldn't be a need for his mercy and his grace and forgiveness. Already so good. If I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I can't what, stand up here and praise him for his mercy and not need it. That's what makes it, in my opinion, that's what makes it so hard walking with Christ is because you're walking in a continual place of brokenness, but yet not in despair. Yes. Yeah. And yes. that's a hard place to walk. Oh yeah. Because I've known that's daily who I am, but yet he doesn't want me despairing. No, don't and, focus on those and, and things. Don't focusing no. on them. No. Yeah. Don't yes. let yesterday define tomorrow. But yet that tomorrow. keeps me in that place of humility. But right. yet I don't want to be humility. I want to be free and yes. I want to be <laughs> who I am and who he's made me be. And, and that, that back and forth. It oh, is yeah. a, it's a, a, very, a very narrow path. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, and one can go to a 
extremes on those pads too. So it? easily, oh, yeah. wow. like that. Oh, it's yeah. it's a really really slippery slope. It Let me tell you why. Slippery. Because this thing called repentance, it is hating yourself. <laughs> but then there's the wicked side of hating yourself. It's just like there's two different kinds of questions. There's the the, the holy side of hating yourself, the flesh, you know, in a love for God. Yeah. Uh, and then there's hating the flesh. Uh, which is basically really a hatred of God because you're saying that he's not bigger than you, like, like Judas committing suicide. That's, that's really a hatred of God because you couldn't accept him that he was big enough to forgive you. And so it gets difficult to like judge those voices and those questions in your head. It's like, am I really hating myself or, or am I hating you by hating myself? You know? It, it, it's hard. It's, a, yeah. and it's Roman 7 all over. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I do what I don't want to do and I, I don't. Oh, yeah. But yeah. that's what yeah. he's, he's so good. He's so good. And that's what we're going to focus on the later part of Job because everybody knows all the questions. But, you know, and, and those three friends, they ask questions in order to try to obtain the answer that they want. And Job yeah. asks questions because he just doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> you know, he <laughs> has been sidewiped so clearly that, like, what? I used to. It's interesting to me. The man that used to pray every day and offer sacrifices for his children didn't say a single prayer in over 40 chapters. <laughs> ah! Do you not see? This was a test for him. That's why I said, consider him. I have more growth for Job in the future. Couldn't take his life. He didn't say a single prayer. He kept complaining and complaining and complaining and complaining and focusing on himself. He had always focused on his children before. All of a sudden, the devil comes in, and all of a sudden, the focus right on me. Da -da 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 -da. And he's discussing things. I'm sorry. Sometimes counseling doesn't lead to anything. <laughs> you know, sometimes talking things over leads to nothing. Sometimes that's a distraction from you even investigating yourself and examining yourself. You know, because you're so busy talking and complaining and being judged by others because the sin that you, you, you know doesn't exist. Hmm. To the point where a lot of us would even, would rather confess to something that we didn't do. To please someone else and to try to obtain that forgiveness. Because you get so confused <laughs> when, when God is being sure. silent. He was being silent. God doesn't say anything until the later chapters. It's true. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, I saw a quote that said, uh, if you're wondering where God is, just know that the teacher is always quiet during the test. Mm. <laughs> and I love that because I'm like, ooh, that's why I always feel like, you know, when I'm being tested, I'm like, where are you? Where's my help? But the teacher can't give you the answer. <laughs> you know, you have to take the test and then be graded on it. <laughs> and, and, but no one likes that. I don't like that. I don't have the answers. The what if I do wrong? Yeah. And test. that's why you're supposed to remember what the teacher's talking about. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And not look over your shoulder at what the other person's saying, because they have a different copy, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, huh. you have to take your time to actually read the questions. <laughs> you know? The test is in the questions, and there are so many questions there in Job, and I, I find it most amazing that, you know, most of our life, we are too busy answering others than repenting. Hmm. We're too busy uh, justifying ourselves to others and complaining to others and looking at our circumstances. This is a man that had everything and that lost everything and all of a sudden the circumstance dominated his spirituality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, God chose him to save the other sons of God. You know, like Jesus Christ was chosen to save us. You know, Job is a type of Christ because oh. in the beginning it says that Satan was about to accuse these sons of men. And look at what even Job had to suffer. Hmm. Just like Christ. And this is, I think, the first book that was written in a oh, timeline yeah. perspective. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And so, um, hmm. but the Lord did not stay silent forever. Hmm. Praise God. God. Uh, uh, Praise God. Uh, and uh, let's see where he starts. Uh, I'm going to read some of what Job says first because before we get into God's answers, I want to hear some of Job's later questions after he's, you know, been talking and talking and talking and talking. 
All right, so in chapter 26, Job begins to talk. And he says, how have you helped him who is without power? That's one of the questions. Uh, but, the, but the thunder of his power, who can understand? And, and so he has all these wise questions, right? From where does wisdom come and where is the place of understanding? Uh, let's see. He says in chapter 31, he says, or chapter 30, I cry to you, but you do not answer me. I stand up, but you do not regard me. And it's like, you, know, you go through that hard time, that suffering. It's easy to blame God, and it's easy to ask questions like this. But these are also some of the questions that David asks in the Psalms. Uh, but also, you could say the same words in a different spirit. Uh, and uh, how Job continues on in chapter 31 and onwards, it becomes almost like uh, saying to God, how, why is this happening to me when I'm a good person? That's really what he's saying, because you can read through the lines of the questions. I, I have made a covenant with my eyes, then why should I look upon a young woman? You know, uh, <laughs> um, if I have despised the cause of my male or female server when they complained against me, what then shall I, sh shall I do when God rises up, when he punishes him? How shall I answer him? Uh, and so it's kind of like, I didn't do those bad things. I didn't do that and that and that's it, right? I haven't been Exactly. I have been praying every day. Oh, yeah. Why is this happening? And he goes on, he said so many things like, how come the wicked uh, prosper and I'm perishing and I wish I was dead? Yeah. Uh, that's essentially saying, I, I don't want a life of suffering. I want a life of glory. And I'd rather die than be poor. And I'd rather die than be sick. Well, then you're not living for God. You're living for riches, and you're living for health, and you're living for glory and honor of men. And that's very scary. Very scary stuff. And this is a man that God called. Blameless. Upright and blameless. Mm -hmm. So that uh, is very encouraging. Very I think encouraging. That may have just been a prophetic word. In regards to because he sees the one that who yeah. we're becoming. Yeah. But that's what I say. That's still encouraging. Yeah, he's not calling him perfect when he's questioning God and wanting to die. No, but he sees he sees the end before the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's why he's he going to you consider work. Job, you know. Yeah, it would be a tough task, but, you know. Uh, hmm. he and, will, blame, and blameless doesn't mean perfect. No. No, I no. no was called blameless after he got drunk. Yeah. So, <laughs> blameless doesn't mean perfect. Exactly. And so finally, in chapter 38, this is where the Lord reveals his, uh, his word to Job. After all these questions from all these wise, scholarly men have been asking question after question after question, discussion after discussion. Finally, <laughs> I love how the Lord answered Job out of the world with, and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now, these couple next chapters is God's answer, it says, but he asks like over 70 questions. <laughs> and people want to look at those questions, and those questions are important. But do we fail to maybe not look at the statements that he makes in between the questions? There are a few things that are not questions, not just questions. He said to Job, prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. And I skip down to verse 5, says, surely you know. And then in verse 11, it says, this far you may come, but no farther, further, and here your proud waves must stop. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 18, tell me if you know all this. Mm -hmm. and remember, they've had a lot of answers. For f 37 chapters, mm -hmm. they've been answering all their own questions, and nobody has prayed to God. Godly men, they were sons of God. Except Goliath, he didn't get rebuked. And so I, 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 I look at this very scary because uh, God answers us with very, very, very many questions and a lot of commandments. Wow, wow, wow. In uh, chapter 39, in verse 7. God says that he scorns the tumult of the city. He does not heed the shouts of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. We search for every green thing, but we don't want to take the brown thing. Hmm. And what I want to come into
to before Job gets his response is in, uh, I skipped over, it's in Job 7, verse 20. Job 7, 20. Yes. And this is the difference between uh, repentance, somebody that thinks they don't need repentance, and somebody that knows that they need it, right? This is what Job said. Uh, 7.20 says this. Have I sinned? What have I done to you, O watcher of men? Why have you set me as your target so that I am a burden to myself? Ah, he had sinned, but he didn't think he had sinned. He hadn't sinned what they said he had sinned, but they didn't see the deeper sin. So if you come to God and say, have I sinned? Woo, yeah, pretty big. And so uh, it, and after God asked him all these questions and says all these things, Job answers the Lord and said, behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yes, twice. But I will proceed no further. Wow. Remember the grace of God. Remember the three-question rule, right? Mm. Now God asks him again. He challenges him again. Mm. And then after that time, thank God, he didn't say the same thing as before. Thank God, he actually uh, answered the Lord and said, this thing that was his uh, repentance. I know that you can do everything and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You asked. Who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Listen, please, and let me speak. You said I will question you, and you shall answer me. I have heard you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Repentance is hard. He's saying, hey, that I hate myself. I'm disgusted with myself. I repent also in dust and ashes. Ashes is, uh, comes out of something being burnt to destruction. Dust comes, I think of sawdust, when you saw some, it comes from breaking, from breaking your, that's not a fun process. You know, the fire of, of the refi refinement is, doesn't feel good. In fact, we want to avoid repentance at all costs because it's not nice to see how bad we are. Mm -hmm. And it's not nice to, to be disgusted with yourself. And uh, it's uh, just like reminding me of the prodigal son who was in the pigsty and said, hey, I have sinned against the Lord God and my father. It's like, he didn't just say, I'm a sinner, so take me back, you know, I'm forgiven. No, he was willing to be a servant. It's like, I just want to serve you, Lord. I don't know what I was talking about. I thought I knew you, but I didn't know anything. And you can do everything. And for someone that knew God very well to say these words in humility and honesty is something that most, most people are not able to do today. And, uh, and then God tells he, he accepts him, and the Lord said to Eliphaz, My wrath has aroused, aroused against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job had. Now therefore take yourselves the offering and the sacrifice, and Job shall pray for you. It's interesting to me, I've never noticed before, that God never told Job to pray for his friends. He didn't. Neither... Did he say that I'll restore you when you pray? He said he restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. So he was forgiven because he repented, right? But he wasn't restored until he uh, prayed for someone other than himself again. It's like full circle restoration where he used to pray for others every day. And then he got so self-centered and so focused on his own pain and suffering that he, he still he was still in pain and suffering by the way when he prayed for his for the friends that came back for the sacrifice he had not yet been healed mm. he was still in sores the restoration came after he did something for someone else even though his situation is hard <laughs> and I love that because we get so focused on our own needs and our own hurts and our own sickness and our own mm. sin even uh, that we, we, we don't 
pray for others. We don't care about others as much. We just discuss with others and compare our horrible situations. Mm. And I love that. And love how God turned it around. Uh, because, sadly, not so many people in the Bible have truly repented like David, like Job. You know, it's, it's not common. Can someone read Jeremiah 2.35, please? Just about the statement that Job said, have I sinned? Have I sinned? And we go to church and say, well, I haven't committed those sins, which is essentially saying, have I sinned? <laughs> it's essentially saying the same thing. I want us to read carefully Jeremiah 2.35. 2.35? Yet you say, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead my case against you, because you say, I have not sinned. Hmm. Well, I would be careful whenever you say I didn't commit that sin. <laughs> I'll be very, very careful knowing what Jeremiah said there. And, uh, Judas, some verses in the Bible when Judas returned to Silva said that he repented. He was remorseful. Some say remorse, some say he repented. Uh, but there's a difference between repentance and repentance. And uh, there also comes a, a time, of, a, a point of no return. You know, God asks three questions, but we don't always see the questions before it's too late. And we have the the fear of death is not a reason to repent. That's why so many Christians repent. The fear of death or the fear of hell, should, it's not a reason to repent. Even Saul feared that. And he repented a lot. He repented three times. He said, I have sinned, I have sinned. But then he blamed the people, forced me to, to do it uh, because you were late. And then he blamed, uh, what else did he blame? He blamed so many different things. He blamed... Uh, he really wasn't sorry. He said, you need to forgive me now so that I can worship. We just want to go into the happy, joyful times, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so just to say, hey, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I'm sorry. That doesn't cut it. Saul did it, and uh, Balaam did it. He said he had sinned, and we all know what happened to him. And uh, in Joshua, when the, the, the confession comes that, oh, I have sinned, when he took the things and uh, hid them in his tent, Acom. Acom, yeah. All his family was stoned to death. He confessed. Yeah. But he was not forgiven. By Joshua, at least. <laughs> I don't know about God, but I'm saying this is so important to understand that a living, uh, uh, repenting and, and living in repentance are two completely different things. Hmm. Saul repented three times. But only because he was scared of the consequences. He blamed the people. He didn't want to own up to it. He said, oh, well, I only took it so that we could sacrifice this to God, right? When he, when he didn't kill everything in that city. Which one's called? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he kept it to the, oh, but we did it for God. Ooh, that's a scary excuse. That's a very scary excuse. It's a convenient one, too. I think most of us probably lean on that one. Yeah. And also the fear of the consequence, the fear of death. So we come and we have to confess before you die, otherwise you have a stain on your soul when you die. Ah, uh, my friends. Are you the confessing fear? for the right reason is what you're saying? Are you, is, is that bit, I mean, your heart? Yeah, is that your heart? You, the the, the only thing that is true repentance comes from the love of God, not from a fear of anything. Because fear doesn't come from God. You can fear him, love and fear him, but to 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 do it because you don't want to go through the consequences or or the condemnation. Well, or I don't want to go to hell, so I better do it. So. Yeah, that's not repentance to me, because repentance means that your heart truly, truly, truly feels the pain that you caused God to feel. So you take that on. Because even John says, save some. Yeah. With fear. See, so yeah. some with fear. So, yeah. so, so you can see, yeah, you can see that it's not going to be the most effective. Yeah. No. 
Uh, and to me, it will be on some, but yeah. the most yeah. of it is from a broken heart when you see God, His love towards you, your sin towards Him. Well, and who is it that you're fearing? You fear God or you fear Satan? Because if you don't want to go to hell because you fear Satan, <laughs> then you're really your fear is wrongfully placed. But you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell because you fear God. Then you, that's different. It's, 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 it's said, good questions, bad questions. Good fear, bad fear. Everything has its flip side. Uh, good and evil. And uh, we've been talking about Saul and the sins that he committed, right? But uh, sadly, or I guess truthfully, the sins of David would appear to us as worse. Oh, yeah. Yet, he had a heart of God. And I know we're very familiar with the Psalm 51, uh, which is his prayer of repentance. But this really captures the spirit of having a repentant life. Not a repent, repentful moment. This comes from, uh, from David. Have mercy on me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. Blot it all out. I'm going to skip through it a little bit because I have some things I want to highlight. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Whereas, he's not excusing it. He's not blaming anyone other than himself. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. And then he goes on to say, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in hidden, the hidden part will, you will make me to know wisdom. Mm. But we want to hide from our heart instead of reveal the hidden things in our heart. Because we're hiding our sin. But he says, wash me, clean me, create a clean heart in me, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me the joy of your salvation. Oh, whoops, I thought salvation was forever. Why does his salvation need restoration? <laughs> you know, that, that in itself is a very scary part. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Yes, Jesus Christ sent them out to preach repentance. <laughs> you know, yeah, they preached the good news of the gospel, but in, in Mark, they also said preach repentance because repentance is the only thing that leads to God. You know, you can't enter heaven without repentance and admitting what you've done to hurt God and feeling sorry for God. That's why God says himself in the scriptures that he, 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 the heaven rejoices much in, in just one person that repents versus the 99 that don't. Mm. You know, it's a very rare thing to have a truly repentant life. Mm. In verse 16, it says, For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God, God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh Lord, you will not despise. Now, he desires our hearts to be broken and for us to come with true repentance uh, and have a repentant life. However, he does accept sacrifices. <laughs> Even though he doesn't desire them, right? Mm -hmm. Remember what Job did? Oh, yeah. Job accepted their sacrifices and prayed for them so that those sons of God also could receive uh, some kind of forgiveness. Like there's the, the individual repentance, then there, there's the corporate repentance. We see with the Israelites, uh, we see all the prophets uh, preaching, repent, this nation, you need to repent, you need to repent. Uh, the, uh, there are some things that we don't know, um, but I do know that God desires a broken spirit, not sacrifices. And I know that that's the full story of what happened to Job. He started with sacrifices, sacrificing for his sons, and then he's accepting sacrifices for others because he now has a broken and contrite heart that feels God. Hmm. And he became, he went from ashes to beauty instead of just thinking that you're beautiful. Ashes to beauty, that's the miraculous thing that happens after we repent and go to God, and he was restored because he prayed. And so uh, it, the restoration came after he prayed, and that reminds me of the, the ten lepers that were healed by Jesus Christ. 
but only one of them was made whole, was restored essentially, because he came back to Jesus. You didn't just accept uh, the forgiveness, healing, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're seeking, you just accept it and run away. You know, Saul, uh, Saul said to David himself, oh, I've sinned against God. I'm so sorry. Come with me now. And David didn't follow him. <laughs> he didn't follow him. He just went his own way. He went after him. He said, oh, I've sinned. You know, you can't be so stupid sometimes that you believe <laughs> that every repentance is true. That's right. Because David knew he was going to do it again and again and again and again. I think that's in Samuel, 1 Samuel 26, 21, I think. But this thing called repentance is not something that we're always living. I think it's just like a teacher or a parent is, like I mentioned earlier, just like John the Baptist said, is you look for fruits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You look for fruits of true repentance. Because if not, you realize they're not really they there. And yes. chances are they're going to do it again. Oh, yeah. I mean, we do. We see that as parents. Yes. Uh, but then you also see, and you know, it's, yep, they got it. Yeah. Now they got it, and they're not going to, they're changed. They're not going to do that again. But even if they do, I think that sometimes we do do the things we do again. <laughs> even if you've truly <laughs> repented. Yeah. Uh, oh, you can get tripped up. Yeah. It's yeah. Just like, it's just like the, the alcoholic or drug addict or whatever oh, yeah. else is. Yeah, they, they really, but I feel that's really such a free, it's such a trap. Yep. It's such a trap when I because I've heard that preacher, oh, if you truly repent, I think it's even this time, if you've truly repented, there's yeah, a change in your behavior, la, la, la. But, but 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 the behavior changes after the heart and the mind, and it's a process, and, and life is a process, it's a test. And so uh, I, uh, I think it, it may set some people up for a huge uh, faith crises and, and self-doubt and God doubt if you say if you truly repented you'll do it no more because what if they mess up again but you know what you don't need someone to tell you to feel sorry because you're already crying right after you know and, and then you come and repent again yep. uh, but I'm saying I wouldn't limit God's uh, crucifixion yep. to saying I, he can only repent one sin one time for me I say, Lord, I, I can't live like that. I can't, I can't live under that guilt, saying that, ah, oh, okay, which sin am I going to commit now? Because like, I already did that one, you know? And, and he knows the heart, and sin is sin, and, and yet, does he like it? No, but he's working. As long as you're living a repentful life, nope. uh, crushed it, for him. Is it becoming your character? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Is your character more likely to sin rather than not to? Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. How's that new heart working for you? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're so quick to, to say, you know, we're sinners who mess up and we hurt God, but just like we don't always know the sins that we have committed, that we have maybe not repented of yet, but living a repentful life crushes everything in you because you're always ashes, uh, being beautified by him into beauty. We also need to remember that the upside of that is that we don't always know what we have done or not done that made him very happy. Mm -hmm. And so the opposite of that repentance is knowing that not everything we do angers God. Okay. <laughs> Thank God, you know? Yeah. This is why I say I'm not all bad. <laughs> you know, I say it to others, I say it to God. It's like, yeah, I know I'm bad, but I'm not all bad. There is a heart in here yeah. that is a heart of God. <laughs> And I'm truly crushed, like David, when he in Psalm 32, uh, he was David was not perfect. I mean, not even not just looking at the big sins like the senses and and the murder and sleeping with someone else's wife. This is what he says in Psalm 32, which is the joy of forgiveness. He says, "Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord." does not impute iniquity. Not blessed is the man who never sins. <laughs> to me, I love that. Cute. Yeah, yeah. Blessed is the, whose transgression is forgiven. And so in order to be blessed, I guess you have to have some forgive, forgiven sin. Not blessed are those that are upright and righteous. Yeah, yeah. but this is, this is him talking and he goes on. And in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, ah, hiding, 
from your your iniquities and your sin and the things we want to just turn our oh I'm not gonna look at that one I'm not gonna show God that one I'm not gonna admit that one yeah look what happened my bones grew old this means that David did it too ah man after God's own heart he didn't always repent right away <laughs> otherwise he wouldn't write this when I kept silent my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long Repentance is difficult. <laughs> it's not fun. That, my friends, is walking through the valley of the shadow of death. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. He didn't always <clears throat> repent right away. So, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you. Huh. So, what, who are the godly? In a time, listen to this, in a time when you may be found. See, we can't always be found. There's a time to be found. And I know that that gives me a lot of um, comfort and healing and not focusing on the things that I have done against him in my past. Forgiven, not forgotten by me. Because at that time, it was not my time to be found. <laughs> you know, and I think that's probably how Paul dealt with that too. He said, I haven't murdered anyone. <laughs> Because at that time, it wasn't time yet for him to be found. Yeah. And so, yes, it's wrong. Yes, it's sin. But we must also accept the outcome of repentance yeah. and not bring it back. Like dirty laundry, it's like it's clean. It's like looking at a, a white t-shirt that is perfectly white that was used to be messy and say, no, you're still dirty. No! Because of the water of Jesus Christ, is forgiveness, because of the blood of Jesus. And so, uh, to me, you're going to get dirty again. <laughs> you know, you live life, you get dirty. But don't forget to go into the washing machine and to see that you're filthy. Just like Isaiah said, I'm filthy before you, Lord. And us priests, we have to understand that we're messy before we get clean. And so... To me, hearing that even David himself, a man after God's own heart, um, spoke to God in such an honest way, saying, I was quiet. You know, I wasn't ready to be forgiven because I truly hadn't reached the peak of repentance because I really, I was just sorry I wasn't yep. hurt for you. We can be sorry all day long, but not really have any feelings, you know? God himself, Jesus Christ, healed because he had compassion on people. That is bigger than feeling sorry for people. Because what did he say, Paul said, godly and worldly? Yes. Two different kinds of sorrow? Yes. Godly repentance or worldly repentance? I don't believe that you can say a prayer of repentance without crying. <laughs> Either in your spirit or your soul or out. People cry different ways. Yep. But to say that you are loved by God and I can come to him, that's like Saul saying, oh, I'm a sinner. Forgive me so I can go worship. <laughs> no. Yeah. Look at uh, this in Acts 17, uh, 30. Truly, this times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. So there is a time when God actually overlooks Overlooks, there's a time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now, he says, commands all men everywhere to repent. Yes. To repent. Mm -hmm. Not to just say, I'm a mess up. I'm a sinner. I'm sorry. I don't want the punishment. I don't want the wrath. I don't want the judgment. I don't want uh, the consequence. I don't, I don't want the stain on me. We think that, like, uh, that God is going to leave a stain on us. He's the one that washes us. And if we're really white, then yeah, bleach might burn, but you'll get clean. But we don't want to go into the bleach. We don't, it's, 
Repenting is not a joyful experience. <laughs> the joy comes after the repentance. <laughs> you know, it's not a joyful experience. It's a horrible experience because you actually feel uh, the pain and the suffering of Jesus Christ in uh, in a little way. Yeah. You're being that. nailed to the cross, yeah. and like it, 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 it's not something that I I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to be forgiven, but I do not want to repent. That's what this man Peter went through. Yes. He, he went through, yeah. He went through exactly what you're saying. And then you get to, right, each time, hey, I feel and believe is that each time it gives you a deeper understanding and appreciation of the cross. Mm -hmm. Because you really understand what it took for that sin to be paid for. And that's how much he loves you. And then he who's been forgiven much loves him. Loves, loves him much. much. And it, it just has that, you know, it's just, that's the process. It's like, then your heart changes. It's changing. It's changing. And it's, it's, exactly. it, it's broken. And it's, it's oh, made, yeah. and it's broken. And then oh, it's, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it, it, each way, each time, it, it's, it's gotta, he does it. We got to burn up and break our bones like Job did because we have not been forgiven much in the beginning. In the end, he's paying for his friends that did him no good, <laughs> that accused him. Yeah. It's like Joseph, you know, it's like you, uh, the things in life that break us and the tests that we have, even though they're very hard, don't assume that you're failing mm. just because it's really, really hard. You know, there's extra credit. <laughs> you know, he knows that it's very painful because he feels that pain every day, all yeah. the time. And he's the only one that can have joy and at the same time mm -hmm. and uh, to me it's just I, I I I fear for a lot of people in this world that are not being preached the, the, the repentance that Jesus Christ called the disciples out to preach um, because it's not really being preached we don't see prophets calling people out on their sins so like David was called out, Saul was called out, uh, uh, so many people were, were, were calling people out in love, you know, and that doesn't mean that they, they knew exactly what was going on, but even say, not assuming that everything is well, again, that's assuming, that's thinking that you know, that was Job's problem in his life before he finally said, I don't know anything, he thought he knew it. Today we're in the hyper grace Generation. But that is grace. If yeah. you bring a sinner into repentance, isn't that grace even though it hurts? What I'm saying is that the hyper grace uh, 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 teachings and, and doctrine that we're in today does not uh, allow a person to deeply consider things that hurt God because if a preacher says, hey, you've been, this is, it's been taken care of, it's, the grace of the Lord has taken care of it, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, to me, it makes the grace of the Lord very cheap, mm -hmm. and it makes your, um, uh, your repentance almost superficial, mm -hmm. because you're not even there. You're, you're not even, you're not even there. David went there. Now we can say, well, of course, David murdered somebody. Mm -hmm. And I never, I never did that, you know, mm -hmm. you know but it's wrong. Because <laughs> yeah, we, we aren't rightly discerning the difference between condemnation and conviction. Oh, yeah. We're not. Wow. Right. That's, oh, that's we're not it. Right. We're not, because they feel the same. Yeah. They feel the same. Yeah. But there's truth to yes. one. That will lead you to a change, and that will lead you to a, a heart change. Yes. And not by your might, not by your power. That's but right. As the Holy Spirit is working in you, and that window of opportunity is there. Now's the time. Today is the day. Repent. I want to deal with this. I want to cleanse you. I want to wash you. I want to help you with that. Not. I'm not wanting to judge you to condemn you. I'm going to judge you so I can get rid of that. Yeah. I want to set you free. I want, I want. I love you. I mean, that's the whole thing behind it. Is I love you. I don't want to leave you there. I want to get you out of it. 
But in the meantime, I have to cut you open. You have I have to, to feel to guilty. The, I have to do the surgery. You have to wait until I sew you up. Then the healing and the restoration can begin. But that's you know, what people want to escape. They don't want yeah, to go through the process. They yeah. don't want to go through the surgery. Yeah. And that's why you hardly hear messages on repentance because it's it, yeah. It's it's because it's, it's been forgiven it's by the cross. Yeah, exactly. That's about, what I'm saying. But there is no forgiven. forgiveness without repentance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who died on the cross. Mm -hmm. He didn't die for me if I don't repent to him. If I don't submit to him and come back into fellowship with him. He didn't die for me then. Mm -hmm. Then I'm living here now for a life eternal in hell. There is no forgiveness without repentance. Yeah. Either through someone else sacrificing for you or yourself it's it's scary it's very very scary uh, and just to kind of tie that knot up but it's in Luke chapter chapter 16 the rich man and Lazarus that just to prove what we have been saying he said I beg you therefore father that you would send him to my father's house for I have five brothers that he may testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment Abraham said to him they have Moses and the prophets. Hmm. Let them hear them. Hmm. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one risen Though from the dead. Though one rises from the dead. Thank you. And so the problem hmm. comes that <laughs> we don't even listen to our own guilt. We don't listen to our own conviction uh, because, yeah, we don't want to go have surgery. We just want to live with cancer, you know, and, and it'll take us to hell. No matter how many times you say, I have sinned against God. No matter how many times you have said, Lord, forgive me. That's not repentance. Oh, I'm a sinner, forgive me. That's not repentance. It can be if you have the heart of repentance. I mean, the, 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 the repentance is not in the words. To me, that's very, very, very scary because unless you feel hurt and shame and self-hatred from because you are just so unlovable to God and you failed Him utterly and you haven't listened to Him and you haven't answered Him, instead you have you've answered incorrectly on all those three test questions. <laughs> you've blamed others. You blamed your wife. Uh, you hid from God. Because of your nakedness, you don't want to be naked in front of him, just like Adam. I hid from you because I was naked. You? Mm. How do you know that you're naked? We, hit, we do the same thing that they did back then, every day. We'd rather hide in our nakedness than to say, help me, clothe me, restore me. And to end this message of repentance. It's a healing of the soul, uh, and it's a healing of your spirit, and it's coming back together with God, not by making him come to you, but by coming to him first. And so many times we're so quick to call on God, but when he's calling on you, <laughs> we're, we're much slower. <laughs> we'll have to be dragged for 42 chapters to repent, you know? And we would rather go to counseling and discuss amongst friends. Than, than to go to God. He prayed every day in the beginning and not a prayer for all those chapters. That's uh, very true in our life today. David said in verse, Psalm 41, verse 4, to close this up with the healing of the soul. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. My enemies speak evil of me. When will he die and see his name perish? Uh, that's the, lie, the life that we have. Because he goes on and says, And if he comes to see me, he speaks lies. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. And when he goes out, he tells it. Uh, this enemy that we have speaks to us 
so often and, and it takes us away from him and makes us hide. And David said, even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. And that's David who had a heart of God saying that I need your mercy because my soul is sinful. I sin against you. And by the way, this is not Psalm 51 <laughs> that was accredited to the sin of Bathsheba. David was well aware of many more sins than those oh, two yeah. sins. He just wasn't those two. He didn't have to have a prophet tell him about every single one. <laughs> that wouldn't be a heart of God then. That's right. He was in his character. And realizing our own brokenness, and, and I don't want to call them failures, but I'll call them shortcomings, because just realizing that and putting it in the proper place, which means put him with God, and hurt for him, and take away the burden from God. You know, we want him to bear our burdens, but then we burden him, and we let him carry that. Even suffering shall only last for a little while. And then the restoration and the forgiveness comes. Because not all crying is bad. But not crying at all will lead you to hell. Well, I guess you'll be saving your tears for hell then. Yep. Hmm. Wow. Wow. So I hope it's an encouraging message. I know that it's hard. It's hard to go through the life of Job to see it and to see that there's so many few, there's so few examples of true repentance in the Bible. There's more instances where there's fake repentance. Even Pharaoh himself said, I have sinned against God <laughs> twice, yeah. you know, and he was Pharaoh. So, let it be far from me. Or when I say I repented, I just said I sinned against you. Because as many times as people said it just with words, I know that it happens in me. I think I've repented, but then it comes back. And the fruit of true repentance that we talked about is joy. <laughs> it's joy and happiness in him and dancing. David talks about it all day long. You're no longer bound and depressed and, 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 and heavy hand on yeah, you like yeah, that. Yeah, no so even though it's short suffering for a little while, the thing that comes after is that you actually freedom. have a heart of God, you have freedom, you have joy, joy in his salvation. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. Well, I guess this is a, salvation had become misery, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. And so don't focus on the hard part and the, the sad part. Just know that what comes next restoration of joy, yeah. love, and peace. Yeah. Amen. It's like that test 